Good evening and thank you for choosing to be with us tonight on 13 on your side. I'm Scott Gross. After the Senate passed a $1 trillion infrastructure bill, many are wondering what the money will be put towards. U.S. Senator Kristen Sinema paid a visit to Yuma today to talk about how it will directly affect Yuma County. 13 on your side's April Hedinger breaks it all down for us from the airport. <laughs> Senator Kirsten Cinema detailed how this infrastructure bill will have direct impacts to Yuma County. One thing she made clear, it won't raise taxes, which is something she fought for in Arizona. Like here in Arizona, protecting from wildfires, preparing for our water shortages. Water restoration, a phrase Arizonans are used to since living in a drought. For the Yuma Agricultural District, our plan includes two fifty million dollars to create or conserve a hundred thousand acres of uh, acre feet of water annually at Lake Mead. She says protecting water and agriculture has a national impact as the lettuce capital of the world. Arizona has been in a drought for over 20 years now and so we included additional funds for western water storage. We also included funding to ensure that we have water recycling. Other matters on the bill five million dollars for road maintenance in the state as well as $6.8 million for renovations of runways and air traffic control systems shared by MCAS and the airport. The senator says accessibility to technology is important to smaller districts. This is, I think, important in the Yuma community. We are investing in faster internet so that more people in more places will get high-speed broadband and it will also help families afford internet service. Representative Tim Dunn asked a critical question about the train backup on Fortuna Road heading to the US 95 citing emergency vehicle urgency as a reason for concern. Reporting from the Yuma International Airport, April Hedinger, 13 on your side. Again, the House back in session this week to consider bills on voting rights and infrastructure, as you heard. Now, earlier this month, the Senate passed both a bipartisan infrastructure bill and a Democrat-led multi-trillion dollar budget resolution. That focuses on what they call human infrastructure, but House Democrats are split over which infrastructure measure should come up for a final vote first. Nellie Brand has more from Capitol Hill. The House interrupted its August recess and returned to Washington this week to tackle infrastructure. It's time that we invest in America, we invest in American workers. All of this stuff is the wish list of the progressive list, uh, progressive left in the squad. And that's why we're here in August. Monday morning, the House Rules Committee took up the trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill and the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation resolution. In linking these two bills together, the majority is truly trying to have its cake and eat it too. I think that the two parties do not share the same values in terms of what is necessary. House leaders are hoping for final floor votes Tuesday. A group of moderate House Democrats threatened to vote against the budget resolution unless the physical bipartisan infrastructure bill is voted on and signed into law first. The group's leader, New Jersey Democrat Josh Gottheimer, wrote in the Star-Ledger, the House cannot afford to wait months or do anything that will jeopardize passing this infrastructure bill or losing the bipartisan support behind it. Meanwhile, some progressive Democrats are threatening to withhold support for the bipartisan bill unless lawmakers take up the budget reconciliation measure first. And there are disagreements about a range of issues, even within the Democratic caucus. That's democracy. With a very narrow majority, House Democrats can afford to lose only three votes from their party to pass the budget resolution resolution without support from Republicans. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has set an October 1st deadline to enact both measures. Florida Democratic Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy is the latest to join the group of House moderates calling for passage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. In a statement, she said the strategy to link the bipartisan bill to the budget resolution is bad policy and bad politics. Well, the city of San Luis said it reached a mutual separation agreement with city manager Tadeo De La Hoya. Under the agreement, De La Hoya will get paid $132,000, and that includes seven months of salary at $115,000 and $540, along with health insurance. The agreement was reached last Thursday after the San Luis City Council 
put De La Hoya on administrative leave. This after a majority of the council voted to remove him from his position in July. And with the U.S. now averaging nearly 160,000 new COVID-19 cases a day, there are hopes that another vaccine milestone will lead to more people to go get their shots. Femi Redwood reports from New York. Federal regulators have granted full approval to Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for people 16 and older. It's the first coronavirus vaccine available in the U.S. without an emergency use designation. This vaccine has gone through the gauntlet. President Biden hailed the decision and said he hopes it will convince skeptics to get immunized. The moment you've been waiting for is here. It's time for you to go get your vaccination. Get it today. The Pfizer vaccine was approved for emergency use in December. Since then, over a billion doses have been administered, including hundreds of millions in the U.S. Like, there's really no running away from it anymore. Earlier this summer, a Kaiser Family Foundation survey found that nearly a third of unvaccinated adults would be more likely to change their minds if the FDA fully approved a vaccine. I feel less anxious about the whole thing, and I'm ready to get my second one. The move prompted the Pentagon to announce it would move ahead with a vaccine mandate. New York City is adopting a similar rule for all public school employees and won't allow them to opt out. All staff of every kind, principals, teachers, custodians, uh, food service, you name it, needs to have at least one dose. Pfizer's vaccine will be sold under the brand name Comirnaty. The vaccine remains under an emergency youth authorization for 12 to 15 year olds, as do the vaccines made by Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. Femi Redwood, CBS News. The CDC says more than 60% of the U.S. population has received at least one dose of a coronavirus vaccine. Over 51% are considered fully vaccinated. Well, that brings us to our question of the day. Will the new vaccine approval entice you to get the vaccine? If you don't have it, 47% of you said yes. 53% of you still said no. Thank you to all who participated in our poll. And students in Calexico went back to in-person school today. Now, after having to learn from home for over a year, Students made the much anticipated return inside the building, but unlike Arizona students across California, they have to wear a mask when they're indoors. That also includes teachers and staff, mask or no mask. One special staff member is just glad to be back. Many children came to school. They came walking or driving. I missed my job directing school traffic because I was already stressed at home for all the time I was at home due to the COVID pandemic. Students who were not registered for class had to go to the district to enroll. California is also now requiring teachers and staff to either be fully vaccinated or provide negative COVID test results. No mask, no service. That's the message from several businesses in Imperial County after the new mask mandate went into effect. 413 Fitness Center in Imperial is sharing their experience having to make the switch yet again. Our very own Vince Ibarra has more from Imperial. Business indoors is open to those who wear a mask, and 413 Fitness Center here in Imperial is welcoming in customers who are masking up. 413 Fitness Center's doors are still open even though Imperial County reinstated a new mask mandate. Manager Summer Luna says it's been tough during the pandemic. The whole mandate has been um, pretty stressful. Um, we are trying to do what we can as far as making sure you know everybody comes in with their masks. She says the fitness center has an employee dedicated to keeping equipment sanitized. Luna understands the hesitancy some might have coming into the gym, but says their equipment is put in place to help keep your distance from others. We have a couple of equipment where we have shields in between the, some cardio equipment if people feel more comfortable. Luna also says there's plenty of open space in the fitness center to complete a comfortable workout. And she advises those still apprehensive to call and ask questions. If you have any questions, reach out. Come in, come see the place for yourself. Come um, ask me anything you'd like. Staff at 413 are also on board to help with any questions you might have. Trainers understand the worry of going to the gym during these times. They say the biggest thing you can do when you're not at the gym is to get outside and walk. I highly recommend them to get out in the sun, go for walks. Quimina says walking is a great way to boost your immunity. He says staying away from alcohol and maintaining a healthy diet is also helpful. I think if we focus on being more healthy, we'll be more equipped to combat and to protect ourselves against the virus. And Quimina also says that strength training is another way to not only look fit, but maintain overall wellness. In Imperial, I'm Vinci Barra. 
Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying your Monday today. Tomorrow's going to be a very good day to get out for a walk for a, a little while before the heat really starts to crank up. Right now is actually another good time uh, to go out for a walk as we're at 90 degrees in Yuma, 89 degrees in El Centro. Let's take a look, shall we? On Outside on the RV World of Yuma Skycam, beautiful view of downtown Yuma right there. That is 4th Avenue South. Uh, you can't see up into the distance or you can't see up into the sky, but I can tell you I was just outside and we do have clear skies. You can see the moon out there. It's 99% lit, so you can look for the man in the moon tonight. We'll have clear skies tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, our gusty winds will start to taper off a little bit as well. Now, coming up in your first alert forecast. Yeah, bring on the heat. It is a coming. We are going to get very very, very uncomfortable here uh, very, very soon. I'll let you know when that'll go into effect. We have an excessive heat watch. I'll let you know when that is going to go into effect and when it will be lifted. We also have another fantastic viewer weather photo to share with you. All of this coming up in just a little bit. A California wildfire continues to grow as crews work to protect structures after the fire jumped a highway on Saturday. The Caldor Fire in El Dorado County ignited on August 14th, and as of this afternoon, it has burned more than 106,000 acres and is just 5% contained. A 40-mile stretch of Highway 50 was closed on Friday. Those living in the area are allowed to travel on the road but must show ID and proof of residency. Officials say they don't anticipate reopening the highway to the public soon because the fire still poses a threat. So far, over 400 homes and six commercial buildings have been destroyed. Evacuation orders are in place for thousands of California residents. Coming up next on 13 on your side, the very latest on what's happening in Afghanistan, plus why holiday shopping might be a little more costly this year. Your dogs were out of your control. They're huge animals. Five or six dogs. Six pit bulls, to be exact. It's not my dogs. My dogs are not vicious. They're your dogs. There was no blood at all. Nothing. My dogs had nothing on them. What you're suggesting is that his dog wasn't killed. The dog was killed in the city, Your Honor. I had to carry his body all the way home. Next, Judge Judy. My name is William Yank. I'm a 23-year-old, three-time leukemia survivor. One evening, my roommate was trying to talk to me, and I responded to him in a delirium of mess and confusion, and he said, we're going to the ER immediately, and came back with leukemia. They started me on chemos. They started me on a bunch of antibiotics, but the chemo wasn't exactly working. So my oncologist decided that he wanted to try me with CAR T cell therapy. And it worked. Leukemia Lymphous Homeless Society was this unforeseen blessing for me because I wouldn't have been able to get CAR T cell therapy. It got that FDA approval in 2017, and I wouldn't have had that option had the Leukemia Lymphoma Society not moved that forward. We are about nine months and feeling very healthy, strong, and I live. To give or get help, visit LLS.org. When kids need medical care, they will often face stressful and life-changing experiences. From complex treatments to long hospital stays, these special patients miss out on the things that most kids take for granted and let kids be kids. That's where Starlight Children's Foundation comes in. Since 1982, Starlight Children's Foundation has transformed the in-hospital experience for more than 17 million seriously ill kids in 800 children's hospitals and facilities across the United States. Our state-of-the-art programs like Starlight Virtual Reality, Starlight Hospital Wear, and Starlight Gaming let kids just be kids, if even for a few moments. Whether donning an action figure gown instead of standard hospital issue, or settling into gamer mode, if it brings a smile, a laugh, or just a break from their reality, it's happiness delivered. Learn more at starlight.org. That's starlight.org. Thirteen on your side starts now. Welcome back. I'm Scott Gross. President Biden met with his national security team today to discuss security challenges. And there's just one week left to finish the withdrawal of all Americans and Afghan allies. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. 
Thousands of Americans remained trapped in Kabul, and Monday the Pentagon confirmed the military is making limited trips into the city to transport citizens back to the airport to be evacuated. We are going out as needed and helping Americans uh, get into the field. The U.S. and its allies evacuated more than 16,000 refugees in the last 24 hours, headed to overcrowded processing centers in the Middle East. The government called in private airlines to help move the evacuees onto new centers around Europe. We are running biometric and biographic background checks on Afghan evacuees before bringing them to the United States. Refugee flights have already begun landing at Dulles Airport outside of Washington, D.C. President Biden tweeted, we will welcome Afghans who helped us in the war effort to their new home in the United States of America because that's who we are. That's what America is. President Biden says he may need to extend next week's withdrawal deadline to make sure everyone is evacuated. But the Taliban says it isn't agreeing to any extension. Ultimately, it will be the president's decision how this proceeds, no one else's. The administration says there is a growing threat of terrorist attacks on the airport in Kabul. And there was a gunfight overnight involving U.S. forces. No U.S. casualties or partner force or uh, coalition forces were involved, but regrettably, an Afghan security force member uh, lost his life. President Biden will discuss the situation in Afghanistan with allies during a virtual G7 meeting Tuesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. And it may only be August, but you may want to get an early start on holiday shopping and expect to cough up a little extra dough for those gifts this year. Why? Well, it's because the shipping crisis is getting worse. Now, the disruption to the global supply chain since the start of pandemic has spurred a shortage of products. Now, this means fewer choices and a higher cost. The latest issue, a China terminal shutdown because of positive COVID-19 cases, causes a bottleneck and delays for other shipping lines. There's also a truck driver shortage in the U.S. and in the United Kingdom. And as a result, air terminals are also receiving excessive freight. U.S. airports like Chicago have delays up to two weeks to collect that cargo. CEO of Adidas already saying they won't be able to meet the strong demand the second half of the year has. Some companies are moving products to other areas but are still seeing delays. Coming up in your weather, hot days are coming and we also have an excessive heat watch. More on that when we return. It's a fact. We use our internet and TV more than ever, with most of us spending nearly seven hours a day online. So it's no wonder thousands of families are switching to Spectrum because most families have up to eight connected devices, which means they need even more speed. Switch to Spectrum Internet and get the fastest starting speeds for the price. 100 megabits for just $44.99 a month with a free modem and free security suite included. Call 833-621-4499. When it comes to TV, we're watching more than ever. In fact, 80% of us watch TV every day. Spectrum TV lets you catch all your favorite sports, news, and more live. Plus, download the free Spectrum TV app and watch on your devices. Switch to Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-621-4499. The fact is, Spectrum has the best services at the best price. Switch to Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each with no contracts. We'll even buy out your current contract. Call 833-621-4499. Our connections make powerful things happen. Uniting individuals and communities. We are Rotary. We are people of action. And together, we turn great ideas into reality by accessing our networks, our experience, and the best of ourselves to make a difference. Around the world, Rotary brings leaders together to build new friendships and to solve problems. Like in Austria, where generations work side by side to build sustainable housing and community centers. In India, volunteers run a mobile blood bank to help provide a steady blood supply for their local community. And in Taiwan, people are working hard to get vulnerable citizens the support and services they need. With over one million members, we know what people can do when they come together. Take action with us. Find out more at rotary.org slash action. WWE Thunderdome, the Rated R Superstar Edge is back and out for vengeance on Roman Reigns. Plus, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn in a last man standing match. It's an all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, Hot Fox.
Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying your Monday. We're almost through it, so if you had a case of the Mondays, uh, we can almost turn the page here in just a couple of hours. Not too bad out there right now, clear skies. You can see uh, the moon out there, the man in the moon. It's also a great night for stargazing here in the desert southwest. We're holding at 90 degrees in Yuma, and we're at 89 degrees currently in El Central. Let's, let's take a look outside, shall we? And the RV World of Yuma Sky Cam. There is downtown Yuma right there on 4th Avenue. Slight breeze out there as well. You can kind of see some of the trees out there, right there, even down here. Uh, not as gusty as it was earlier today. Yeah, we had winds between 10 and 20 miles per hour. They're starting to, to calm down here just a little bit, and they will continue to uh, into tomorrow morning. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Right now, what I want to show you is the satellite and radar of what we have in the area, and not much as far as any kind of cloud cover. There's not much on the East Pacific, not much down here on the Baja Peninsula. And as we fast forward into the area right here, you're going to see we will remain, to be clear. And that was from earlier this afternoon, this evening, I should say, into where we are right now. Now, jumping ahead and take a look at our future cast. A big high pressure system right over the uh, state of Texas right here. Maybe some possible showers down in the uh, southern, uh, southeastern portion of Arizona. But uh, for the most part, we're going to continue to be dry. And we're also going to start to really crank up the heat in the area in just a couple of days. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Take a look at what's going to happen here. Let me get out of the way so you can see all of this. An excessive heat watch will go into effect on Wednesday at 10 a.m. and it will stay in effect until Friday at 8 o'clock at night and it consumes most of the desert southwest, Imperial County, eastern San Diego County, Yuma County, uh, Maricopa County, Pima County. So just be advised Wednesday through Friday is going to be a real cooker around here. So make sure that you stay hydrated and uh, stay cool as well. Here's your future wind slide. I mentioned that the winds will start to taper off a little bit as they are right now. That will continue until about after uh, dinner time tomorrow, the uh, gusty winds will start to return to our area. Uh, so please be advised of that, especially in the Ocotillo area. What are the winds doing right now to our air quality? Well, the Imperial County Air Quality Index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District shows moderate all the way through the valley from the north on down to the south, even over the border in Mexicali. I want to show you the current temperatures that we have right now through the area. Imperial's at 89, Holtville 88, El Centro's at 87, Salton City you're at 90. And as we cross the state line and the county line into Arizona and Yuma County, much of the same temperatures here as well. Yuma's at 88, YPG's at 90, San Luis at 88, and Summerton currently at 87. I want to show you this fantastic photo sent in to us from Alita. Uh, fantastic from the Fortuna foothills. She captured the mountains, she captured shadows, she got the clouds, she got some sand, she got a little bit of everything else. And I was able to pull this picture from Alita uh, off of the uh, weather photo gallery. Uh, all you can do is scan this with your phone. It'll take you right to the photo gallery. Once you're there, upload your photo, include your name there as well. Or you can do it the old school way. Find me on social media or just plop it off in our share box at kyma.com slash share. And I'll use it in an upcoming forecast. Now jumping ahead to your Metrocast to help you uh, plan your evening tonight into tomorrow morning. Clear skies, 84 right around midnight when you wake up tomorrow morning for your cup of coffee or whatever breakfast you have. 79 degrees and sunny at 6 a.m. And tomorrow at high noon, we'll be at 100 and sunny, we're going to get a lot warmer from there. Check out your 30, make that the seven day forecast. Uh, breezy tomorrow, 108, much hotter Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Take a look at that 112 to 114, almost unbearable to be outside. Please be careful. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. 108 tomorrow, breezy. Our average for this time of year is 105. And then take a look at Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Lots of sunshine and lots of heat. 112 all the way to 115. Next on 13 on your side, we continue our prep football previews and today we shine the light on the Calexico Bulldogs straight ahead in sports. Since 1981, play today. Boost and Cricket charge more for unlimited 5G. Metro does it. Introducing the big 5G upgrade. Just 25 bucks a month gets you unlimited 5G and a free 5G smartphone. That's half the price for one line of unlimited 5G smartphone data. Plus a free Samsung Galaxy 5G when you switch and trade in. 
all with the power of the T-Mobile 5G network. Rule your day with 5G. Only at Metro. Emotes say a lot, but they can't say it all. Think your guildmate is struggling? Try these dialogue options. Go beyond emotes. Check in with your guildmates at seizetheawkward.org. Hurry to the Oak Tree and Moore's Customer Appreciation Sale. Everything 50% off. From our family to yours, we invite you in to see how much we've grown. Yuma's first and only Arizona's Furniture Retailer of the Year. Come for the fantastic service and the 50% off store-wide. And our bargain basement furniture outlet has discounts you can't pass up. We're proud to be locally owned and operated since 1984. As always, buy from our family with confidence. Welcome back, everyone. We continue our prep football previews, and today we shine the light on the Calexico Bulldogs. No excuses and higher expectations are the coveted phrases for the Bulldogs football program heading into the fall season as they aim to rebuild a new culture. However, struggling in recent years, the goal for Calexico this season is to remain competitive in the Imperial Valley. To do that, a lot of underclassmen will need to fill some bigger roles. The Bulldogs have 10 seniors, but only five are returning starters. It's the leadership of those returners that this team will lean on as they look to build off the spring season in which they only had one win. Head coach Fernando Solino uh, enters his first season after taking over for the shortened COVID season. Solano says his team is hungry to compete and will bring a lot more emotion onto the field this season, which will be a turning point in molding a new culture. The culture we're trying to implement is setting up higher standard here, um, the higher expectations. Uh, one thing is making a commitment to the team, to themselves, and having no excuses for it. You know, it, it's time for us to get the job done without making any excuses. The Bulldogs kicked off their season on Friday at home against Palo Verde, and that hunger showed in a tough battle. The Bulldogs fell to the Yellow Jackets 15 to 6 on their home field. They will look to get in the win column again this Friday, another home game against Castle Park. City Blitz is back, and 13 on your side has all the action. And now to my top five prep plays of the week. Play number five comes from Cal Jones Field. As Central's Damian Rodriguez finds Sergio Garcia, who goes up and gets the pass, busts a few tackles on his way to a first down. Play number four from the same game, Mount Carmel quarterback Caden Gent fakes the handoff, keeps it for himself around the right side, and Gent scampers in for the touchdown to give the Sun Devils the lead. And speaking of long runs, play number three comes from Eagle Field. Holtville Seth Eiton gets a nice block from big brother Peyton, and Seth does the rest. Eiton turns on the Jets for the long touchdown run. Now play number two also from Eagle Field, and check this out. It's going to be the big fella, Southwest Seneca Haynes. The big guy plows his way into the end zone. Lots of love for the big fella, and our number one play goes out to the out-of-towners. Yeah, the trick play, Caden Gent again with the toss to Josh Bell. Bell launches a pass to number 17, Luke Severe, for the first down, a little razzle-dazzle, and those are my top five plays from last week. To college soccer, Arizona Western in Las Vegas yesterday against the College of Southern Nevada. Check out Tessa Smith's determination. She scores her first collegiate goal while falling backwards. Smith gives the Lady Mats an early lead. Uh, later, with the Mats up 3-0, it's Vegas native Jada Centeno. She scores her second goal of the game. Centeno would add a third later. Lady Mats hang on for a 5-3 win. And the Matador men's soccer team was also in action yesterday. They defeated Southern Nevada as well in the season opener 5-2. Both Arizona Western teams will host their home openers 
this upcoming Saturday at AWC. Hey, coming up, some local cycling clubs try to crank out some good vibes for the people in Gila Bend. It's safe to say that a great day's work starts with a great night's sleep. So no matter what kind of job you have, Denver Mattress has the right mattress for you. So shop the Labor Day sale today, because the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. Or save up to $700 on Tempur-Pedic adjustable mattress sets and get a $300 gift. Save up to $200 on our Doctor's Choice lineup, plus 7 years no interest and free shipping. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right mattress. What's at stake in the September 14th recall? It's a matter of life and death. With Delta surging, Gavin Newsom is protecting California, requiring vaccination for health workers and school employees. The top Republican candidate? He peddled deadly conspiracy theories and would eliminate vaccine mandates on day one, threatening school closures and our recovery. Stop the spread. Return your ballot or vote in person by September 14th. Protect California by voting no on the Republican recall. Possibilities are all around us. Everywhere we look, we see opportunity in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision, and connections, we turn great ideas into action in communities all around the world that we call home. Like transforming an old bus to feed hungry children or providing life-saving equipment to those who need it most. From fighting disease to rebuilding schools, together we can make real change happen. We're Rotary. We are people of action. Get involved today at rotary.org slash action. Before we go tonight, Yuma County's cycling community offered a helping hand to people in Gila Ridge affected by recent flooding. Clubs like Los Cyclists, Border Town Riders, and New Class Cycles started a collection together, then traveled to Gila Band to present the donation and help with cleanup efforts. A very nice gesture indeed. Now, New Class member Jesus Mendoza shares why he feels it's so important to help. We need to help out because what if it happens to us? What if that happens over here? You know, and, and we got the levee over here at the Colorado. If that breaks and it floods us over here, we would want we would want the same help. So, um, if anybody wants to step, you know, step up and go out there and help, they really de they really need you guys' help out there. Mendoza says that there is talks of returning to Gila Bend to help in the future, and if you're interested in helping their causes, you can visit them on social media. Just search 928 Bike Life or Easier yet, just go to our homepage, KYMA.com. Let's take a look at your seven-day forecast once again before we let you go. Again, we're really going to get hot. I really wanted to show you how hot we're actually going to get. Uh, 108 tomorrow, breezy. Our average is 105, so we'll be a little uh, above that. But take a look at Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as we head into the weekend. Very hot, sweltering heat as we're getting through. The same can be said for Imperial County. Again, tomorrow, breezy in 108, and then we really crank up the heat Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Even into the weekend, it's going to be 111 degrees, sunny, and very dry out there. Well, that'll do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for choosing to be with us. Remember, we're always on and always free online at KYMA.com. Have a good night and stay safe. Stephen Colbert is next.